Hello, this is Samir and I want to give you an insight on the technical background of a simulation pipeline in FX 2.5. So we'll be looking at what is happening when the simulation is running. So let's take a look at Cine4D. Once it started, also an instance of FX is started in the background. Let's assume you create an FX scene in your object manager. At the same time, FX is creating an internal FX scene node. But what is a scene? What does it contain? It contains all the nodes used in the simulation. And you should be aware of possibly four different types. First of all, we get the generators. Well, as the name suggests, they're generating data. And that's actually all they do. Either they create data from scratch or create it from available information. Next type are containers, and as in real life, containers just provide space to put things into it. These things could be certain type of data, for example, particles in a particle group. So the particle group is just a container. The third and most important node type are operators. Usually they just modify available data or generate new data and put them into containers, but they will never contain data themselves. So they're kind of like working bees. And the last one is delegates, and delegates are called by other nodes, for example operators, and they're just doing like tiny operations. For example, forces or constraints, they're all delegates. All right, let's assume you create a volume inside the object manager. At the same time, FX creates a generator node for the volume. Then you create a sphere that should act as the reference or source for the volume. FX generates an FX triangle mesh node. So the Cinema 4D polygon mesh is converted into an FX polygon mesh. For each object that you create in the object manager, an according node is generated internally for the FX scene. This also teaches us that the hierarchy in the object manager just doesn't matter for the FX scene nodes or how they are executed or evaluated. But let's take a look how they are actually evaluated. So let's assume you click play on the Cinema 4D timeline and it jumps from frame 0 to frame 1. The first thing that is done, all the nodes are gathered and they are sorted based on their pipeline stage. And we can see the stages in our pipeline viewer. Effects will now step through each of these stages and evaluate each of these nodes. This would be for one time step, so it goes from top to the bottom. So let's assume we have some sub-steps. At the very bottom, it will now cycle back to the top and do it all over again. So it will repeat for each sub-step. And that's actually all you need to worry about as an artist. This lets you control or manage your setups very easily and you exactly know where and when your nodes are executed. So it is also easily possible to rearrange nodes and therefore generate new effects just by the execution order. Well, this was it for the technical background on the simulation pipeline. Hope you check out the other following tutorials as well. Hope it was helpful and see you soon.